my name is Pablo Requena and in this video we're going to see how to make the curving blocks or we also call them peones in Spain so I'll show you this is what we're looking at is this little bracket which we will use when we are assembling the guitar it will be the part that will join the soundboard to the sides so the easiest option when you're looking at this job is of course to buy the curving blocks already made and you can go into um, on the internet and sure you can find them with Madinter online and they are perfectly good and they work really well but I like making my own peones for a few reasons so the first one is that I like the grain of the peones to be in a certain direction so I've done a couple of diagrams here to explain what I mean when you have your curving block and if you have the grain in this direction so perpendicular to the long side then what it means is that when you glue it into your mold into the guitar so if this side down here if this is the soundboard and then this along here is the side when you put the glue in these two sides what will happen is that the damp that the wood gets from the glue will make this side curve very slightly but it will be not too much and it will fit reasonably well however if we have the grain in this direction or by all means in other directions but not perpendicular what will happen is that when we fit the block and we put the glue into here this side will curve considerably and you can see that the surface that it's in contact with the side it will be quite small plus also you will have quite a big gap in the top of the uh, peon when it comes to meet the side you can help this by damping this side a little bit you just brush a little bit of water into it as you are applying it and that will compensate for you know you have damp here and damp here then it will keep it a bit more stable but nevertheless if the grain goes in this direction it will work better so that's the first reason why I like making my own peonies now the other one the other reason is because I've got another diagram in here normally the peonies that you buy or even the ones that you make as well they have a 90 degree angle in this corner which is the corner where um, it will be glued into the, into the guitar and that's okay and but we're also going to, we're going to need some in which we have 95 degrees in here so let me explain why I've got a soundboard here and basically this soundboard will go down in this direction into the mold and then the neck will come into here and then the sides and what will happen is that when you fit the sides into here you will have 90 degrees into this part of the soundboard because all of this is flat but this area is not flat there is a dome into here so when you have the sides coming down into here they will never be 90 degrees in here my guess because also it's not really so easy to work it out 100% but my guess is that it's about 95% sorry 95 degrees so what will happen is that you will use 90 degree brackets or peones to go from this point up into the heel block and then the 95 from about this point down all the way down into the end block because this is the area that is not 90 degrees to the side that way the peones will fit better into the soundboard so it means that we need to make two types of peones so going back to the first drawing if we want to where are my drawings in here if we want <coughs> to achieve to have the grain in this direction in my curving block what we need to do is to make to cut a strip of material so that we can cut two triangles out of the same block so we're going to start working from a rectangular piece 
which when we cut from diagonal to diagonal it will give us two strips that then we can cut and we will have two peonies of out of each one of them. So let's have a look and see how this works in real terms. Now the starting point, <clears throat> it's a plank like this one. This is what I would use for the neck. It's called Cedrella, Cedrella odorata, Cedrella odorata. And um, what I do is that I save the best uh, planks for the necks. But sometimes I find that the grain is really good it's very cortisone, it's perfect, but if it's got some imperfections, then this is what I would use for peonies. For example, this one looks really good. There's nothing unto warts in it, and the grain is really perpendicular. So this one is really too good for peonies. So this one I will be using for an egg. But I've got one in here that I can show you that even though the grain is really good, you can see it's very nicely quartered, so that's ideal and the grain is very straight, you can even see the medallity rays here but we've got a couple of problems here, we have a couple of ripples which on themselves they, have to, they don't have to be a major problem but this one is, and I've marked it with pencil because it's not so easy to see on the camera but basically this is a shake in which the grain is broken across so that probably comes from when the tree was falling and it was uh, and a lot of stress when it fell and the grain broke. So this really is nothing we can do to avoid later on, so it, we're not going to be using it as a neck. So they could, this would be a really good piece to use for this job. So from this, all you need to do is to work out the dimensions that you're going to cut in your band source so that you get the grain in the right direction and you end up making strips a little bit oversized for example, these ones, again, with the grain orientated properly, you get the right thickness and the right width, and you get the first strip. Now, this strip is 18 millimeters long by 10 millimeters wide, and that's the dimension that we need so that when we cut it in an angle from corner to corner in a diagonal, we get the right size peon for what we need. So this would be the first step to cut these planks into strips like this one. Then I will be cutting it in half like this one because it's a little bit more manageable and easier to work with. So now that we have one of these strips we need to cut it from corner to corner in a diagonal. You can see already I've done a little bit of cutting in here and that is what we are aiming for. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can set up your pencil and tilt the base to 30 degrees, which happens to be the angle that you have here, and you can cut it along like that. However, I find that it's a lot easier to make a jig. So I've got this jig here, which I made out of plywood, and Basically, it's made of two pieces of plywood, 13 mil uh, not 13, 18 millimeters each, three quarters of an inch, and they're glued together. And then I've cut along here in the band, so I cut this face. And along here I have 60 degrees there and 30 degrees here. So the way that I did this was by tilting the bed of the of the. Um, Banzo, and then on 30 degrees you cut this along using your fence and you cut this face. You clean it and with the block that you have as, a, as an off cut you glue it the other way around into the same face and that way is how you achieve having this 90 degrees here but already on a base being 60 degrees along here. So. And then all I did was to cut the excess and shape it so that it would work well for me. So basically all it, all it is is that when you're going to dress your strip of wood, if it's in there properly, and now we can cut this a lot more easily in the band saw. So I'll show you how to cut this. It's very simple. All we need to do is to get this face 
parallel to the fence and parallel to the plate this way so I can fit this into here and now with a clamp I attach my jig into the banzo like this and now So all I need to do is to cut it and it will cut just on the diagonal. I'll do a little bit so that you can see actually how this works. can see that it will split this in half very nicely. So from this the next step is that you have two triangular strips of seda and you have two clean sides but one rough side which is the one that was cut by the bouncer. So we need to find a way of cleaning this up accurately so that it's even all the way along, so that all the peones end up being the same size. And to do that, I made this jig. Now with this jig, you can see that we also have a base made of plywood. And on the plywood, what I did was to glue four strips. They're made of spruce, but it doesn't matter the, the wood that you use. But you can see that actually it's the same shape. So all I did was to get a few of these strips, clean them up accurately and carefully, to then glue them in place into the piece of plywood. And then I fitted a stop at the end, because the way that this works is that I will fit this strip into here and this other strip into here and you can see that the rough side now is parallel to the plywood so what happens is that as I pass through this block with the strips into my um, drum sander it will clean this top side and that stop will stop the strip from flying away so this will all go in through as a unit so what will happen is that I can control how much and reducing the thickness here in the in the strips so that they all end up being exactly the same size which is what I have in here so these ones and now I've got a few already cut in here they're now ready to go and ready to cut into peones like these ones and um, one second this out of here. So to cut them it's also quite an easy operation. I've just done this little sledge that fits into my into my banzo here into the strip that comes in your banzo so that is exactly the same thickness there, so that is, it travels um, easily. And then that bar needs to be completely perpendicular. So if doing it like that, then um, I know that I can put a couple of these strips. You can tape them together with masking tape if you like. And I fitted a stop so that each one of my blocks ends up being cut at 8 millimeters. So I'll cut a few so that you can see. So you 
you can see that this is a very easy job. You just need to take your time to cut all of them. And um, that will give you all the 90 degrees blocks that we were talking about. So now we're going to have a look at how to make the blocks at 95 degrees. So what I've done is to separate a few of the strips because I also know that I need to have, let's go back to the soundboard, if I'm going to use 90 degrees blocks to about here and then 95 to about here, I know that this distance is roughly double this distance. So I know that I need to make twice the amount of 95s in relation to the 90 degrees. So I've got four strips of um, 90 degrees bars and I've got eight strips here. I've already done a few of them but I will show you how to make some of them so that you can see what to do. So these ones are ready and this one this one is ready as well and these ones I need to make. So basically these 90 degrees that I have here I need to change into 95. So I'm going to need to find a way of planing some material of this edge accurately so that it's all even. So I'll show you how I did that. With my shooting board, I use a straight edge as a stop and with a block plane I can plane this side but if I just go and do it like that all I'm going to do is to carry on having 90 degrees here so I need to find a way to elevate this edge so that as it's a little bit higher as I'm planing it I am changing this angle <clears throat> so I'll show you how I did that. I got a strip of 0.3 millimeters veneer. Okay, so if I stick this veneer right on the edge there with a little bit of masking tape, got a bit of dust in my throat <coughs> sorry so I'm just gonna put this tape into here whoops this is a little fiddly so don't do it in a rush So now I have a little strip in that edge <coughs> and I, guess I can set this up now, I can clamp one end in here. another clamp in here and then I'm gonna put some marks in this side so that I can actually see what I'm doing and it also will be easy to see on the on the video so Hold that in place and as you're planing you can see that that's already removing that edge, you can see the line is gone. 
So all I need to do is to keep going until it's completely clean. Just a little more. That's it. So now I'm going to mark here 95 because I want to make sure that I don't get them mixed up with the other ones. And now this bar has a 95 degrees in here. And we can actually check with a retractor so that we can see that's 95 and that is 95 as well. So it's exactly the angle that we were trying to, to achieve. So you would do the same with all the other bars to get them to 95 degrees. And then cut them all into little blocks like this one. And you could go ahead and use them as they are. But it's, it's always uh, going to be the case that as you cut them in the bandsaw, there's going to be quite a bit of tear out in the edges here, so I don't know if the video will show um, very clearly, but you've got these edges with a bit of fluff, which it would be good to clean them up and have them all nice and, and um, ready to go. But you could just get a little bit of sandpaper and clean them up one at a time, which you're going to be here for a while. Or you could use a tumbler which is what I've got here. This one is one that I made myself and it's very simple, it's no more than a, a tin from, you know, like a, a biscuit tin and it's on a base of plywood and this is a um, motor that I've got from a um, window wiper for a car and because it's 12 volts I connect it to a um, 12 volt um, transformer and all we need to do is to plug it in and what you would do is you put all your peonies in here of course this is not going to work with so very few peonies in here, you're going to need to have quite a few of them. In fact, I make enough to make quite a few guitars, and this ends up being about half full. That's when it really works, this, this device, because what will happen is that you put them inside your tin, and as you switch it on, basically that will be spinning, and what it will do is that they all will be rubbing against each other and in that action all the edges will come up really clean. So, but this will take a bit of time. This can, they, they need to be here for a good couple of hours before you can see that they're actually really clean. I'll show you the result of that, which I've got some over here. And you can see that they all come out really, really beautifully clean and there's no rough edges or anything anything at all I don't know if it's possible to see in the video but you could be amazed of what of what comes out of it right and that's that's it so that way now you know how to make your own caffeine blocks it's quite a process and of course it's very time consuming so usually to not to be doing all of this too often I try to cut as many as I can so that I got enough for 10, 12 guitars, that sort of thing and that way I don't have to be doing all of this too often but also it means that they are exactly as you want them like I said you can buy them from Madinter or from any other supplier and they are really good, they are absolutely fine but I think it's really worth to do this job and get them to be just right. 
So I hope you found this video useful and until the next one. Thank you.